Hello and welcome to the latest podcast with an update on the business grants uh, as promised. Uh, once again, I'm joined today by Janet Sinnett, our benefits team leader. Janet, can you give us the latest update on the situation as regards the business grants? Sure, yeah, thanks, Mike. I think it's probably worth recapping on the grants that we've had available since the start of the latest lockdown on the 5th of November. So what we've got is the local restriction support grant for closed premises. And this is for businesses that are forced to close due to national or local restrictions. So during the recent lockdown, we've administered a grant for all those forced to close during the 5th of November and the 2nd of December. We're still verifying applications and making payments to eligible businesses as this scheme has not closed. It covers the whole of the lockdown period linked to the business rate system so the business must be paying business rates to be eligible and to date we've paid out just under £750,000 to 506 businesses. All those forced to close during this period are businesses that were providing in-person services from the premises on the 4th of November and forced to close because of the lockdown. If that's the case the business may be eligible for a grant of between £1,334 and £3,000. As we're now in tier two some businesses unfortunately must remain closed and they include our wet lead pubs and bars or any other business that's serving alcohol for consumption on the premises that don't serve substantial meals. And I understand there's been a lot in the media recently about the definition of a substantial meal and table meals, but we would expect the business to, prepare, to be preparing food to be registered with our environmental health team for that purpose. Or if they're considering serving food, they must contact environmental health to discuss this further. So where we're at for all our wet lead pubs and bars, grants will continue on a fortnightly basis for as long as we remain in a high tier. If the pub or the bar applied for the recent grant during the lockdown, we do not need them to reapply. If we're certain they're not currently registered with environmental health for preparing food purposes, we will automatically pay them. Any of them are unsure or if they didn't apply for the grant during the recent lockdown, we need them to do that now on our website. Alternatively, just give us a call and we'll clarify all available support for their circumstances. Are we confident, Janet, that all the businesses who are potentially eligible for grants have contacted us and have received the grants? Or is there still you know, a number of businesses out there who, uh, who have not made a claim and should go ahead and make one? That's that's right. Yes, we've got about 300 businesses that we believe were forced to close during the lockdown period who haven't applied for support. So what we're doing is we're sending a letter out today to all of those businesses. If they've recently applied, that's fine. Um, but yeah, so we should make some direct contact. Those letters will be will be reaching next week. And just to clarify, you know, we've got, you know, you know, pubs springs to mind uh, as an obvious one where the, they've had to close again. Um you know, because we are tier two, um, those pubs uh, that have received a grant during the lockdown, uh, what you're saying is they don't need to apply again if we've already paid them, we'll just do that automatically going forward. That's right, yes. Every two weeks, um, the grant amounts are going to be half of the recent lockdown period. So they're going to get £667 for businesses with rateable values of 15000 or under, £1,000 for businesses with rateable values of between fifteen and 51000 £1,500 for businesses with rateable values of 51000 and above. They've got to be mandated to close. That's, that's the key thing with this um, local restriction support grant for closed premises. If it decides to close because it's, you know, if a business says, uh, you know, it's just not viable for me to stay open, um, it can't access the closed grant fund. But what we may be able to do is help them under a new scheme that's coming online, which is the local restriction support grant for open premises. The difficulty with this for today is that we haven't yet had the guidance. Um, so, you know, it's, it's not right for me to go into too much detail. But so far, we understand that we'll be asked to prioritise business, hospitality businesses, bed and breakfasts, hotels and leisure businesses as we will receive funding based on our total number of businesses within those sectors. So the, the, how would that same grant cover, uh, you know, again I'll use a pub as an example, um, that have decided to to open where, you know, they're the mandated to shut, but they've decided to open because they're going to put some kind of food offering on. 
but clearly their business is still going to be severely impacted um, you know, by the current restrictions that's in place. Would, would this discretionary grant or, or, or whatever it was you, you described it as, would, would that be in place to help them potentially? Potentially, yes. Yeah. So if it's a wet lead pub, you know, it can't open, it, it's got to shut. Um, so it applies for support under the local restriction support grants for closed premises. If they open because they offer food and they don't get support under the closed, then they will come under the sector of um, hospitality businesses that we may be able to support under the open scheme. We understand with that it's just for tier two and tier three areas only. It's a fund that will be available until April 21. And we understand that we may be able to make a roll in payment for every two weeks that we remain in tier two or if we moved into tier three. And what's the sort of time scale you're anticipating on getting the clear guidance that you need to start authorising those payments, Janet? We've been told that it should be with us by close of today. Um, so, yeah, we just need a bit of time to, you know, understand it, create a local scheme, because the expectation is that we create a local scheme. And, you know, we hope to open the application process for those, um, you know, soon after. But we'll, we'll communicate you know, everything on the website, through the socials, um, as, as we usually do. Uh, I'm imagining, you know, some people might ask, you know, you, you know, we've got 300 businesses who are potentially eligible um, to get a grant from the council. You know, why do we not just publish them? But is, does GDPR prevent us from publishing a list of all the people who could potentially apply for the grant? Yeah, that's right. And it's about whether they qualify as well. You know, the certain questions, um, you know, it's the description of the business property that leads us to think that they may be eligible. Um, you know, but there may have been some changes in circumstances. The business may have stopped trading. So there's certain questions and, and declarations that we've we've got a duty to to ask them to submit before we pay our government funding. So in terms of who, who what what, e what email address is the best one for anybody to use to make inquiries to get a, a you know quick response? Yeah, so it's business dot rates at copeland.gov.uk. All our information, if anybody accesses our website, copeland.gov.uk, there's a banner at the top of the website, which is the, the COVID support banner. And within that banner, there is a support for businesses tab. Click into the tab, all the information about business rates, reliefs, grants, there's some information in there regarding businesses that may be unsure about food and, and the requirements um, as a result of us going into tier two. So everything is on that page. But again, you know, Call us up. You know the, the team are here to help. If if um if you if you want to reach us by by the uh, the Copeland main phone number. And you know I would add to that. Uh, you know residents. You know and businesses that they can they can WhatsApp me personally or send an email directly to me Mike dot Starkey at Copeland dot gov dot uk and I will forward that through to uh, Janet and our team. Uh, and we'll try and get a response uh, as quickly as possible. Is there any other key messages at this stage, Janet, that you would uh, wish to update residents with? No, I think I think I've covered it all off. Really, I think it's just just to summarise. You know, closed grants are there for people who you know are mandated to close, and then there's often, as we found, you know, during the, the whole pandemic, there's often this discretionary element. In the past, it's you know we, we have got the additional restrictions grant, um, which we opened um, as a result of being in the lockdown. I think the only other thing I'd like to say about that is that you know this is not just for for businesses that have got a premises. This is anyone who is self-employed, either been forced to stop working because of the lockdown, or they can still work but they've been severely impacted. An example, to just to give you an example, you know, it might be a taxi driver. He can still work, but yet his takings are down because all the pubs and bars are closed. We also know that a lot of self-employed people have been unable to access the self-employed income support scheme. You know, if that applies to you, you know, please apply online now for this additional restrictions grant fund. And equally, if you're in receipt of self-employed income support, you can still apply for the additional restrictions grant because it won't affect your self-employed income support payments either. And is, is it your department who are managing those grants? So it, will, would that be our hand to start, uh, picking a number of those up? The self-employed income support is not by the local council, so that, that's all administered by uh, by HMRC. Um, but no, it's it's all the business rates team. We're administering the local restriction support grant for closed premises. That's all those mandated to close. 
we're administering the additional restrictions grant, which is, you know, for the self-employed or for those that are not registered to pay business rates, or perhaps they're just impacted. And we will be administering, you know, the wet lead pubs and also the open scheme, which is for those that are impacted in those sectors. The other thing to mention, obviously, is the additional £1,000 that uh, was announced by the Prime Minister earlier this week for the pubs, and that will be administered by us as well. At this stage, we don't think there'll be a need for an application for that, as long as we've got the details from the, the recent uh, local restriction support grant during the lockdown, we should just be able to add that to the to the fortnightly payment. But again, we're going to need guidance for that as well. OK, that's uh, really helpful. Uh, Janet, no doubt we'll be uh, speaking again uh, shortly and, uh, and updating further, you know, as this is a you know, moving piece to, on, a, on a daily basis, really, as information's coming through from the government. You know, again, I would urge anybody who's uh, who's watching today's podcast, uh, you know, but, you know, particularly if you're p among the potential 300 people who've not applied, um, to get in touch and find out if you if you are eligible, uh, and we can turn those payments around for you as quickly as possible. And and again, anybody who is watching. Uh, you know, if there's if there's areas uh, the the or questions that are not being uh, answered or things that aren't crystal clear, you know, come back to us. Uh, you know, we're trying to make these podcasts as as informative and as helpful as we possibly can. So any feedback uh, that helps us to to help you better, um, it would be gratefully mm -hmm. received. Jana, thank you very much for joining us again today, and we'll speak again shortly. Thank you.